Formation of cyanohydrins from aldehydes and ketones is probably one of the first reactions we introduce in the carbonyls chapter. In a nutshell, this is a reaction between carbonyl like an aldehyde or a ketone, which is going to give you a corresponding cyanohydrin after it reacts with a cyanide anion. And the cyanohydrin is the combination of a two functional groups where we actually have a nitrile and an alcohol OH that are sitting both on the same carbon of a molecule. Making cyanohydrins is rather easy. So, for instance, let's say I took acetone and reacted that with sodium cyanide and aqueous sulfuric acid. In this case, I would get cyanohydrin in a roughly 80% yield, which is not that bad. Mechanistically speaking, this reaction is a sequence of a nucleophilic attack and a proton transfer. However, depending on your textbook and your instructor, you might see those steps in two different orders. What I mean here is that some textbooks and instructors will show the nucleophilic attack first, like what I have here, giving you this negatively charged intermediate and then do a proton transfer giving you the final cyanohydrin, while others will do the proton transfer first, giving you a protonated intermediate like so, and then do a nucleophilic attack, giving you the final cyanohydrin over here. So, which mechanism is more correct? Well, that's a very good question. As far as I know, there are no direct mechanistic studies proving this mechanism one way or the other. If by any chance you know of any, please let me know in the comments below. Personally, I lean towards the second version of this mechanism uh, simply because forming a negatively charged intermediate like what we have in the first version in acidic conditions, after all, we are working in sulfuric acid, that feels like a bit of a stretch. And we know in many other instances when we are reacting carbonyl compounds in acidic conditions, the first step is typically going to be a proton transfer, and the protonated intermediate like what I have over here is most likely an intermediate like we have in many other reactions of this sort. But in any case, since I'm not the one who gives you your final grade, you should always check with your book or your instructor to make sure that you know what is expected of you on the test, and when you see mechanisms like this. Now, what's really cool about this reaction is the fact that this reaction is an equilibrium. So, I could take the cyanohydrin, like what I have over here, and I can reverse the reaction, giving me the initial carbonyl and the cyanide. And since we normally make cyanohydrins in acidic media, if we were to reverse these conditions and do the reaction in basic media instead, then we can force the opposite process, the reverse reaction. So, if I were to take a cyanohydrin and then treat that cyanohydrin with sodium hydroxide, then I would get the original carbonyl, acetone in this case, and the cyanide anion. And here on the screen I have a mechanism. Here, the cyanide is a living group. And while it is not the most common living group that we're used to seeing in our reactions, it can actually serve as one relatively easily in basic conditions. And there are quite a few interesting reactions that use cyanide as a nucleophile that temporarily turns into a living group and then disappears when it's no longer needed. Probably the first example that comes to mind is the benzene condensation, but I digress. Now, why bother with our cyanohydrins? Who cares? Outside of the fact that this is kind of fun-looking combo of two functional groups, cyanohydrins actually do have a couple of very neat uses. First, we can hydrolyze the cyanohydrin to a corresponding carboxylic acid. The thing is, a part of the cyanohydrin is the nitrile functional group, and nitriles can relatively easily hydrolyze in acidic conditions to the corresponding carboxylic acids. So, for instance, if I took cyclohexanone here and then converted that into the corresponding cyanohydrin, then I can hydrolyze this cyanohydrin uh, into the corresponding 1-hydroxycyclohexane carboxylic acid, which would be significantly more challenging to make using other synthetic procedures. So, whenever we need to make a carboxylic acid with a functional group in the alpha position over here, then in this case cyanohydrin might be a very good choice of a synthetic intermediate. And another cool use for cyanohydrins in synthesis is their ability to give amino alcohols after reduction of the nitrile functional group. So, for instance, let's say I took butanol and I converted that into the corresponding cyanohydrin. Then, I can 
take this uh, nitrile and I can reduce that all the way down to the primary amine. And while there are other methods that can make the same combination of functional groups inside of the same molecule, this one is a very clean, simple and straightforward methodology. And since simple aldehydes and ketones are commercially available and they're also quite cheap, this type of chemistry makes a good starting point for many complex synthetic schemes. And while the cyanohydrin synthesis is one of those reactions that we often brush away as boring and, you know, insignificant on many occasions, it can offer you a lot of versatility and synthesis of complex targets. So this reaction is definitely something I suggest you keep in your synthetic toolkit as it can potentially save you a lot of time and effort during your exams or in one of your homework problems. Have you ever needed to use the cyanohydrin synthesis in one of your homework problems or was it one of those reactions that you learned and kind of immediately forgot about? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. As always, Thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, you can tell me this by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment below. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.